Now, the other thing that's interesting about nuclear transformation is it allows scientists to make totally new elements that you can't find in nature. So any element with an atomic number over 92 is known as a transuranium element. These guys have atomic numbers over 92 and they're all unstable, which means that they don't really, like you can make them, but they don't really like their lives all too much. And so if given the opportunity, they'll decay. They'll, they'll break apart, they'll spit out alpha particles and beta particles, change the number of protons and neutrons in their nucleus. So that means that even if, even if they ever existed in nature, they decayed and turned into something else long ago. But we can still make them in the lab by taking existing elements and smashing new things into them. Okay? Here's an example of how you could make something with an atomic number over 92, how you could make a transuranium element. You can take, for example, Pb, which is lead, and you can add Fe, which is iron to it. You've got to get these things going super fast to slam into each other because they both have a lot of protons in the nucleus, and those protons, they're going to want to repel. So we get them going super fast, smash them into each other, and what are we going to get? Well, one thing that we're going to get is we're going to get a neutron shooting out. In order to figure this out, just like we did with these other you know, nuclear problems, we add the number of neutrons and protons, and protons on this side. I add up my protons, I get 108 protons, and then I get 266 neutrons and protons together. Okay? So that means that whatever's going to be on this side of the equation has to have 108 protons, because I don't get any protons out of the neutron, so 108 here, and my mass number is going to be 260 is then I add one from the neutron and then I have 266 on both sides of the equation. Now, how do I figure out what element this is? I look on the periodic table for the element that has an atomic number of 108. And it turns out that it's this guy, HS, Hassium. You probably haven't heard of Hassium, that's because it's a transuranium element. Uh, we don't see much of it because you've got to make it in the lab. You've got to make it by combining these two atoms. And that's not the kind of thing that you can do like in everyday life. You, know, you need a big fancy particle accelerator to be able to do that. But the point of this is that you can make these elements that don't normally occur in nature by combining two different atoms. Okay? Now there's one more thing that I want to mention. And that is that sometimes a nuclear transformation reaction will end up then being followed by some kind of a decay reaction. That's what happens here. In this example, we take uranium-238 and we add a neutron to it. Okay? Bombard that neutron in. It's not particularly hard, you know, because neutrons have a neutral charge, so they're not going to be repelled by that uranium atom. We add the neutron and we get an atom now of uranium-239. Okay? But it turns out that uranium-239, it's unstable. It doesn't like its life very much. It doesn't have the right number of neutrons and protons. So what it wants to do to become happy is to do beta decay. You may remember that in beta decay, a neutron turns into a proton, and then it kicks out a beta particle. This changes the mass number not at all, because the, the neutron turns into a proton. But since we have one more proton, the atomic number goes up by one. So this guy here, uranium-239, undergoes beta decay, and that gives us neptunium, which has an atomic number of 93, as well as a beta particle. So the point here is that all we had to do was add a neutron, and then because it made the uranium unstable, it then decayed by doing beta decay, and we ended up getting something that had one more proton in it, right? We didn't have to add the proton. It's like all we had to do was add that neutron, it made this guy unhappy, and then it wanted to turn one of its neutrons into a proton. So then that's how we get neptunium. So often by adding neutrons to things, you can end up changing the number of protons because after you add that neutron, the new thing you've made will go through some sort of decay. 
most, like almost every one of the transuranium elements are made this way. I want to show you a quick chart of the transuranium elements, not because I have any desire for you to like memorize this or to even worry about learning it, but I just want to show you how we can make all these things, neptunium, plutonium, americium, curium, and so forth, by taking elements like uranium, we add neutrons to them, and then we get various elements like plutonium by taking something like a neptunium and then just letting it do beta decay, which makes plutonium. Then we can take this plutonium and add a neutron to it to get americium, and so on and so forth. Some of the stuff like plutonium, after we've made plutonium, we can bombard it with an alpha particle, and that makes CM, which is curium. We can take curium and hit it with an alpha particle, and we get californium, as well as a neutron getting kicked out. So my point in showing you this is just to reinforce the idea that all of these guys, because they have atomic numbers over 92, are not naturally occurring. We don't find them in nature. But by adding neutrons, by adding uh, alpha particles, and by letting new things we've created undergo beta decay, we're able to make these elements in the lab that you can't normally find in nature. And the other thing is they all have cool names because the people who um, to discover them often get to name them. You can see that they're often named after famous scientists like Einsteinium, or sometimes they're named after the place where, where they were discovered, where they were made, like Americium. Berkelium was made in Berkeley and Californium, yeah, I bet you can guess where that was made. Um, and then Neptunium is named after Neptune and Plutonium named after what used to be the planet called Pluto. So anyway, that is um, a quick explanation. Well, maybe not so quick, but anyway. So that's an explanation of nuclear transformation and transmutation. We've talked about how we can write nuclear equations by making sure that the neutrons and protons on both sides of the equation balance. And then we've seen how we can use bombardment by neutrons, by alpha particles, and so forth to take uh, elements and make new atoms that we don't naturally find in nature. These are the transuranium elements, which have uh, atomic numbers over 92 and tend to have pretty cool names.